We said our goodbyes to Mike and headed back to God's country, Devon. It's been a heavy couple days with very little sleep and a lot of activities. But we can't stop now, we've got the day off, so we're gonna go diving closer to Joe's gaff out of Sorkum, hopefully get some sea bass. And I think we're gonna be seeing some other characters, everybody's favorite halibut slayer that's generally pretty grumpy about having a camera in his face, Andy Gom, and I think Ricky might come down as well. I think it's gonna be great. I think the visibility will be good because the tides are small. That would be nice because the visibility yesterday was pretty turd. The welcoming party at this first place was pure class. However, they weren't all just bass. Conditions here are really, really pleasant. Much better visibility than we had in Cornwall. And this fish I've just shot is a coal fish. A lot of people will easily mistake this for a pollock, but you can clearly see here that white lateral line down the middle of the body. That means it's a coal fish. They taste a little bit different to the pollock, and they're not as common here in UK waters. So I thought I'd take this over those schooly little bass. Only seen smaller sort of bass. Hopefully we'll find a few bigger ones a little bit later on. There's that white lateral line compared to the pollock. I might try and shoot a pollock today to see if I can get them side by side. They're very easy to tell apart side by side. This area was alive with fish. The bass were mostly school sized fish, but I was sure there was something larger lurking nearby. The clean water meant these pollock were keeping their distance from me. I needed to get below the pollock to hide and that open patch a few meters below me looked like a perfect place for the next dive. I get a little distracted on my descent, but I eventually find my hiding spot. Now that's a better fish. So we're kind of on a on a pinnacle, but I went a bit off piste, swam off the back of it in the tide and went into the deeper water in about 13, 14, just dropping down into a really thick kelp forest. And there were lots of pollock about. The main challenge was just trying to um, maneuver in the kelp, because the kelp was so, so tall, sort of five feet tall. So you sort of get tangled up in the, in the fronds of kelp. And, uh, but yeah, once you could maneuver the gun, Get a couple of uh, nice fish for tea. D-Man's caught a really rare fish here. Pretty rare fish for South Devon at least. You can see it's got the 
um, silver lateral line. Um, it's also got smaller eyes than the Pollock and less of a protruding jaw. You can see the jaw on the coalfish doesn't mm. protrude out as much as the, as the Pollock. So, all in all, slightly tastier fish, a bit more oily as well. So, you can enjoy that, D-Man. So I win. Yeah. <laughs> For now. For now. <laughs> For now. It was my turn for Boaty, and sometimes you just have to take it all in when you're in places like this. Oh, this coastline, so, so beautiful. Probably the best looking coastline I've seen in the entirety of England. After the boys had reported seeing a few fish, I swapped with Joe and made a dive. You can tell from the kelp that the current was pumping and I wasn't quite sure which way I wanted to be facing. This was not a pretty dive, but it felt very fishy. I was very fortunate on that drop to land on a fairly fishy area. Saw a couple pollock at the start, was trying to fumble my gun around. Managed to stay down there long enough and a decent sized bass just came in and didn't really stop. It just swam straight up to me and I shot it straight through the, the jaws, which was a nice holding shot. I was a little bit worried it was going to tear out, but seemed to be fine in the end. Probably the biggest bass I've shot this year, maybe seven or eight pounds. So pretty happy with that so far. With the day getting away from us, Joe wanted to check out one of his favourite lobster spots. Armed with his lobster hook and a torch, I got to witness an expert extraction. A beautiful way to cap off the week's diving. Andrew has only two speeds, stopped and full noise. We dropped Andy and Ricky off at the slipway as they had to head home, but there wasn't enough water yet to get the boat out. We needed to kill an hour or two. Four days, four days of diving. It's been a heavy Straight. four days on the body. <laughs> it's been very unhealthy, not a lot of food. Severe lack of vegetables, actually. That's what I've noticed the most. I wouldn't say a lack of margaritas. <laughs> a lack of margaritas. <laughs> but there's a lack of water at the moment, so we are waiting for the tide to come up. And what better way to do that and sign off the day than... The tide's not gonna come up in that time. <laughs> <laughs> it's not coming up in that, it's only going down on this one. <laughs> but thank you so much for watching this series. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. All that good stuff, subscribe if you aren't already and subscribe to Joe's channel because it is, it's going to make a resurgence one day. <laughs> uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Big time. I'll say thanks, you say for, I'll say watching. Kay. See you next time. Okay. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Cheers. Terrible. <laughs> <laughs> that was awful. <laughs>